सो फ्रेंड्स फॉर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट कैलविन साइकिल वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन दैट कम्स इन एग्जाम फॉर सेवन मार्क्स एंड एज इट वॉज मोस्टली रिक्वेस्टेड बाय माई व्यूअर्स सो आई एम यूर विथ कैलविन साइकिल we need to understand first why the name has been given kelvin cycle it is given because of the name of the scientist in the name of melvin kelvin he is the one who created this kelvin cycle kelvin cycle is also called as c3 cycle now most of the time student gets confused between c3 and carbon so remember c3 is different and carbon cycle is different why it is called as c3 cycle the reason is first stable compound of cycle is three carbon okay therefore this kelvin cycle is also called as c3 cycle kelvin cycle has also been given one name that is called as dark cycle now why this kelvin cycle is called as dark cycle because kelvin cycle takes place in stroma of chloroplast so what we need to understand in your exam you can get a question based on number 1 explain kelvin cycle with neat and label diagram or explain c3 cycle with neat and label diagram or explain dark cycle with neat and label diagram whatever will be the question the answer remains same so let's try and do kelvin cycle Hey friends, I'm back with new video of Kelvin cycle. So, in order to understand Kelvin cycle, first you should understand glycolysis. If you remember glycolysis, if you not, please go through my previous video. The glycolysis says I give you a shortcut: glucose, glucose, fructose, fructose, dap, then pagal, down came pagal, one three di pega and three pega. So, this is what we have done in case of glycolysis. If you know glycolysis, you will understand Kelvin cycle because Kelvin cycle is nothing but it's a reverse of glycolysis. Most of the steps of glycolysis is reversed in Kelvin cycle. So first learn glycolysis, then we can go through Kelvin cycle. So let's start with the Kelvin cycle. How to learn it? Start with Kelvin cycle. Kelvin cycle basically starts with RuBP. RuBP stands for ribulose by phosphate. so this rubp is going to act as first carbon dioxide acceptor so carbon dioxide is going to combine with rubp now rubp is a five carbon compound now rubp five carbon compound carbon dioxide combines with rubp as a result it forms six carbon compound but it is unstable so we call it as unstable compound so this unstable compound is a six carbon compound now since this compound is unstable so this compound will split by hydrolysis since it is unstable it cannot remain for long time so we say splits by hydrolysis six carbon when it splits up it splits up as p G A. Now, when I talk about P G A, P G A stands for phosphoglyceric acid. Now, this six carbon is broken down into three carbon. So, P G A is three carbon compound and the first stable compound of cycle. Therefore, Kelvin cycle is also called as C three cycle. Now, this phosphoglyceric acid will be two molecule. why two molecule because six carbon gets broken down into three carbon so two molecules of three carbon will be formed this phosphoglyceric acid undergoes phosphorylation now when it undergoes phosphorylation it simply means it is getting phosphate so it will get phosphate from atp to adp so when phosphate is released it goes to pga and that pga becomes 1,3 Di PGA, it is di phosphoglyceric acid. So this again remains as three carbon. We need to understand one important thing. We need to write two ATP and two ADP. Why? Because two molecules of PGA were formed. 
वन कॉमा थ्री डाय पी जी ए नाउ अंडर गोज रिडक्शन नाउ वेन इट अंडर गोज रिडक्शन इट इज गोइंग टू फॉर्म पी जी ए एल वॉट इज पी जी एल इट इज बेसिकली फॉस्फो ग्लिसर अल्डीहाइड विच इज थ्री कार्बन कंपाउंड नाउ वेन आई टॉक अबाउट रिडक्शन इट सिंपली मीन्स एडिशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन सो आई से एन ए डी एच टू gets broken down into nad and the hydrogen released goes to pga and finally it will be 2 nadh2 to 2 nad pgal if you remember the isomer is dhap so dhap and pgl both are isomers of each other only difference is pgl is little bit less stable and pgl is more stable so this dhap is converted into pgl so finally what happens you get two molecules of pgl now of two molecules of pgal one molecule of pgl will become erythrose so we say one molecule of pgal becomes erythrose and other molecule will contribute to the formation of glucose so how to write the glucose ka reaction if you remember it was fructose 1 comma 6 diphosphate 1 comma 6 diphosphate is broken down into fructose 6 phosphate fructose 6 phosphate is then converted into glucose 6 phosphate which further gets converted into glucose so if you remember glycolysis so it was glucose glucose fructose fructose dab se bana pagal 1 3 di pega and here three pega so if you remember this you can write in this way now erythrose formed is four carbon compound this erythrose further gets converted into sedu heptulose so i can say erythrose gets converted into sedu heptulose now erythrose is four carbon sedu heptulose is seven carbon this sedu heptulose further gets converted into RUMP now RUMP is ribulose monophosphate which is a five carbon compound RUMP is to be converted into RUBP so ribulose monophosphate getting converted into biphosphate so definitely what you need ATP or one phosphate so we say ATP gets converted into ADP phosphate goes to RUMP so it becomes ribulose biphosphate so this rubp now forming unstable compound is in the presence of enzyme called as rubisco what is rubisco it is ribulose biphosphate carboxylase now when you take a look here from rubp to 3 pga from 3 pga to pgal and from rubp to pgl there are three different things when you talk about this here carbon dioxide is getting fixed so this is called as carboxylation step now here when you look here this is reduction step so we can say this is reduction but when you look here there is a regeneration of rubp back so this step is called as regeneration so in order to put things in a very simple way we need to understand one thing rubp five carbon compounds so it's rump RUBP. Remember this. RUMP, RUBP, unstable compound. RUMP, RUBP, unstable compound. Now what to write? Reverse of glycolysis. Glucose, glucose, fructose, fructose, da, pagal, one three di pega, three pega. And here you need to remember only two words: erythrose, sedu heptulose. Erythrose sound like erythrocyte. So erythrose. Sedu heptulose, heptu for seven. So we say sedu heptulose. 
Now, if you look at this cycle, it's very simple to understand. So, with respect to steps, what you need to remember? First, we will say this is step number one. So, step number one is basically called as carboxylation. So, when you say what happens in carboxylation, RUBP combines with carbon dioxide, 5 carbon plus 1 carbon forming unstable compound 6 carbon. Now, the second step what you see here is hydrolysis. What happens in hydrolysis? This unstable compound, so it cannot remain in this state for long time. So, it splits by hydrolysis by addition of water into two molecules of 3 PGA. Now, the third step is 3 PGA undergoes phosphorylation. When it undergoes phosphorylation, means there is addition of phosphate. So, 3 PGA becoming 1 comma 3 di PGA. What will be the fourth step? The 1 3 di PGA undergoes reduction. So, when we talk about reduction, it means there is loss of hydrogen. So, or you can say combining of hydrogen. Okay. So, 1 3 di PGA NADH2 becoming NAD. So, hydrogen is given to 1 3 di PGA. As a result, it becomes PGA L. Now, the step number 5, you can say there is isomerization. DHAP is little bit unstable. So, it is isomerized to PGL. So, you have two molecules of PGL. Out of two molecules of PGL, one molecule will become erythrose. Another molecule will give rise to glucose. Erythrose gets converted into ceduheptulose. So, that is nothing but step number 5 called as regeneration step. Now, the moment you get RUMP, so RUMP undergoes last step that is called as phosphorylation and this RUMP undergoes phosphorylation and forms RUBP and the cycle repeats again. Most important thing what you need to understand here friends, just take a look. When you talk about glucose, the formula for glucose is C6 H12 O6. So, in one cycle, only one carbon dioxide is coming. In one cycle, as you can see, only one carbon dioxide is coming. But how much cycle we need to make one glucose? 6. Why 6? Because 6 carbon. So, we can say the Kelvin cycle a repeats 6 times. Why it repeats 6 times? Because the formula for glucose is C6. So, now try and understand. In one cycle, if you take a look very clearly, you have 2 ATP plus 1 ATP. So, one cycle requires 3 ATP and what to NADH2. So, is it simple? Now, the cycle is repeating 6 times. So, for 6 cycles, you will require how much ATP? 18 ATP and 12 NADP. H2. So, it is NADPH2. Okay. And this is also NADP because it is photosynthesis. So, we write NADP. Now, 6 cycle 18 ATP and 12 NADPH2. So, finally, uh, by using 18 ATP and 12 NADPH2, we make what? 1 glucose. Now, the most important thing what you need to understand friends is that for formation of 1 glucose, the time required is 90 seconds. So, for 1 cycle, how much time will be required? Only 15 seconds. So, 1 Kelvin cycle corresponds to 15 seconds. So, in this way, you can remember all your Kelvin cycle in a very simple way. Carboxylation, hydrolysis, phosphorylation, reduction, regeneration and again phosphorylation. So, this is all with respect to Kelvin cycle. Thank you very much. Friends, do subscribe, like, share and comment on the video. If you have liked it, please hit a like and recommend to all your friends to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.